Shalom. Call Hello, Yahweh by Shana Bashai, by Shambakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be light unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners, and to the Aquath that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. And, um, you know, I'm looking at the Young's Bible Dictionary and the Zondervan uh, Compact Bible Dictionary. And, you know, I never noticed until just now the uh, the crown and the sword, the two-edged sword that's at the top of the, the book. Never noticed that before, which proves a point and that point being that the Lord came back, uh, you know, when he or when he comes back, he's coming back as a conquering king with the two-edged sword in his hand. What does it say in uh, Matthew? Matter of fact, let's get it. Because this lesson is about the ecclesia, the assembly, the saints, who are the elect, who are Israelites. So this is a all-inclusive uh, for the 12 tribes Not universal as Catholicism That's what the word Catholic means It means universal And salvation is not universal Alright but let's get that real quick In Matthew So I actually have to finish this up And go do a training session in the park uh, I think it's 10 and 34 Yeah it says Matthew 10 and 34. Uh, I think I'm going to read all the way through 36. But it says, keep in mind, this crown and this sword, this two-edged sword. All right? Or this that knife or blade, dagger, whatever you want to call it. All right? But it's two-edged. It says, think not, in Matthew 10 and 34, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. And a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his household. The Lord is called, coming to cause division, not oneness, not all together, because the true message of the Lord is, is, is separation. All right, because he's coming back for his people. And not only is he coming back for his people, because he's going to kill two thirds of his own people. But they'll be, be resurrected or they'll be brought back into the kingdom. All right. But they have to pay for their sins with death on their side because the only people whose sins are covered, who, who are exempt from the destruction is the Lord's elect. All right? That is who salvation is for. So we're going to go into, uh, I don't know if we're going to use the Zionists for today, but we're definitely going to go into this Young's. And I love the Young's. All right. Um, so... What do I have marked here? Nope, that's not where I want to go first. This is a uh, election. All right. And as you see, there's a couple things that I that I underlined. It said elected some to every, some to everlasting life and did enter into a covenant of grace. Only people that entered into a covenant in the book of Hebrews was the Israelites, both the new and the old and the new covenant. It still was for Israel. All right. To deliver them out of. Of the estate of sin and misery to bring them into the estate of salvation by a redeemer. You see, that's only for Israel. And then it has a couple scriptures there. Let's go to it. This is uh first Timothy or second Timothy two and ten. And it reads, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. So Yahushai went through what he went through, and he's not going to go through it twice, all right? For the elect's sake, okay? For the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Hamashiach Yahushai, with eternal glory. The elect are going to live forever, and, and even though all Israel is going to be uh, uh, golden in the kingdom, the, the elect are going to be a stature above the rest of the Israelites. All the Israelites are going to know who the elect of Israel is. All right. You know, those are stood stiffly on this side, you know, for and when, when everyone else isn't. 
All right. Um, what's the next scripture? Uh, Ephesians. Take a sip of this. I don't really drink coffee too often. Maybe once a week now, and decaf only. Um, uh, go back to just drinking tea fully. But um, but here's uh. Ephesians. And for you, you know, while I'm looking for Ephesians, for you people out there that drink coffee, whenever you drink coffee, you got to drink double the, double the amount of the coffee and water to balance yourself out. Because caffeine in small amounts is good for you, but it can also give you the Twitters and eventually give you high blood pressure and other problems. Um, yeah, this is Ephesians, the first chapter, uh, verses three through five. So, and that's what they have in there. All right. So that's what I'm going to read. This is... uh. And it reads, 1 Ephesians 3 and 5, Blessed be the power and father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who blessed us, personal pronouns, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So he just said he's coming back with a sword. All right. This clearly tells you in Zechariah, the 13th chapter, that, that two-thirds are going to be cut off and die. All right? And that's talking about Israel. So there's a portion of Israel who have been, from the beginning, marked for salvation. And then there were, and that's Ezekiel 9 and 4. All right? And, and then there was those who were marked for death. You know, didn't Stephen Seagal have a movie called Marked for Death some years ago? All right? Uh, verse 5. Having predestinated us. That's one of the words. That we're in this book. Unto, a, unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Mashiach himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So remember, adoption means to be brought back. So you can't be brought back to something that you were never a part of. All right? And then it reads also see chosen people, predestinate saints, salvation, application thereof. Well, this really told you already. <laughs> okay? It's telling you. So what that's telling you is that Christianity, they know, but they teach the false narrative of salvation is for all. Matter of fact, guess we are going to go into the uh, Zondervis after all. Let's go to uh, find the election. And we'll read it right through the lens. Here it is. The Wadi Yahabashim Lamashah. I found it expediently. All right. Okay. As you can see right there, it says, much attention has been given to the relationship between God's sovereign choice in election and the foreknowledge of God since the two concepts are related in Romans 8, 27 and through 30 and 1 Peter 1, 1 through 2. Erroneous interpretations imply, and that's what the, the theology schools and the, theologians and Christian schools ministries teach. The erroneous way, the erroneous interpretation have been implied that election was the choice which man would make. Uh, using foreknowledge. All right. Prior to knowledge, the interpretation not only contradicts the idea of sovereignty, but ignores the basic meaning of the word foreknew. When election refers to salvation, its objects are individual men. The concept of universal election is foreign to the scriptures. Rather, particular, particular election is taught. And it gave you a whole list of scriptures, which I've gone through before. I'll probably go through them again. But yeah, that'd be another lesson. All right. Uh, that Matthew. So yeah, Yahweh Ratizah. The next part of this, I'm going to go through those scriptures right here under uh, the definition of election in the Zondervan. All right. So that kills that. Now, let's put the icing on the cake. And we're, um, we're to the church now. All right. The assembly. Okay. Another sip from that brass cup. His feet was like burnished brass. Almost like a penny. All right. It says church assembly 
the word that is used to translate Greek ecclesia, all right, or ecle ecclesia, however you want to pronounce it, potato, potato, all right. Let's go to the top here. It says. Which has the idea of an assembly is thus translated. And they gave you some scriptures. I, I've already gone into those scriptures. The Hebrew uh, equivalent was kahal, kahal, which is a religious sense referred to Israel as a religious body. The early church carried the religious sense over the ecclesia and considered itself to be part of the true Israel. All right. Those from any background that had faith in Abraham. Okay. And then it gave you uh, Romans 4, 6. Um, let's go to those. Those are the ones I was really focusing on. Those scriptures this time around. Let me adjust this camera. Let me see if I can zero in on those. All right. We're going to go in on those scriptures right there. Move this over a little bit. Yeah, those scriptures right there. So Romans 4. Minute, of course, I'm getting the message now. Okay, so let's go to our Romans. That yeah, Romans, the ninth chapter is, you know, the book of Romans is a, is a very good book. All right. And the ninth chapter is probably one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible because it cuts all the nonsense. All right. But this is Romans 4, uh, 16 and 18. So let's go to it. And it reads... Therefore, it is the faith that might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, see all to all the seed, what seed, the seed of Jacob, not only that which is of the law, but that which is also of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So they try to bring it, you know, make make it sound universal when they when they read that in English. All right. It says, as it is written, I made thee a father of many nations, the, tw the 12 tribes, all right, though, because each tribe is a nation, all right, whom quickened, so it's talking about the 12 tribes, because Abraham also had other seeds, which we're going to talk about. Remember, he had he had eight sons, but the, the, but the son went through one son, which was Isaac. So not all the other uh, Semitics, as the, as the Israelis would say, not all the other Sh Semitic people, which is actually Shemitic, the sons of Shem. So not the other uh, eight, I mean, several Shemitic nations. OK, it's not it's not about them. It's about the one Shemitic nation, which is which is uh, 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 his son, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. All right. And meaning in proper Hebrew, Yasharala, meaning he is a prince of the power. All right. Uh, verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who whom he believed even even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. So that's talking about the adoption being brought back again. That's what all this has been about. And that's what all this is talking about. So let's go to Romans nine. All right. Six and eight. And when you read when you read uh, verses and Romans nine, when you read verses three and through five. It makes it, it breaks it down even more so what 6 and 8 is talking about. So let's read Romans 6 and 8, 6 through 8 first, just like they have it written. It's funny how they left out 3, 3, 4, and 5, which were even more important. It says, not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. That's talking about the elect and, and the difference between the elect and the two thirds, rather, is what I meant. Okay. Not as though the word of God, because see right there, you read what he just read, it will confuse you, all right? They're, they're, they're trying to insinuate, well, maybe that could be a spiritual Israel. No, this is talking about seed. It already told you that it was talking about seed, not spiritual seed, 
Not because I raised you, you know, even though you're not my seed, you know, no. And not saying that you can't love a, a, a child that, you know, that's not your seed that you raised, not saying that at all. But when it comes down to what's your seed and what's not, you know, you can't change that. Okay, it says, it's, um, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they children. See, that's talking about the, Abraham's other several seeds. All right. But in Isaac shall the seed be called. So if you're not of Isaac, doesn't matter if you're a son of Abraham, of the other nations of Abraham, only the nations that came out of Isaac or out of Jacob. OK. That is they which are the children of the flesh, and that be the other seven. These are not the children of God, but the but the children of promise are the children of promise was was the, the ones that came through Isaac, which was Jacob and his 12 sons. And all the descendants of those 12 sons, point blank, period. The people in that seed line, in that sperm line, sperma. All right. So and and they and those then that seed got scattered to the four corners of the earth among all nations. And the Lord is coming to pull them out of all nations. So once again, this is not a color thing like racist, uh, angry Edomites and dumb Kunalites try to make it to try to defend the lie, which is universalism. Universal salvation. All right. Or are you black only or are you retarded white, uh, 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 not white, but uh, 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 na uh, native and, 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 and uh, 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 Hispanic only Israelites, because you got them out there, too. You got that. That when I first heard that, I was just almost in laughing in tears, man. You got Northern Kingdom d denying Judah, saying Judah is not a part. You know? It's like, wow, you got to be kidding me. I can see the confusion the other way around and how we can adjust that. But nevertheless, you 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 black only Israelites, y'all going off. It's not a color thing. We our people got scattered to all people. This isn't a color thing. This is a seed thing. And I'm beyond convinced that is the reason behind all this DNA uh, uh, technology and stuff that Esau has been using for the last 15 years or so with the just did you test your DNA and all that? Because I believe that Esau is trying to collect up data to find out who among his people and the other nations are actual Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right, they'll come from that those seed lines. Who are the Israelites? Okay, let's go to Galatians 3. This will be the last one. That's this scripture here. Okay, so let's go to Galatians now. Third chapter, verse 14 and verse 40, and, and then jump up to four, uh, 29. It says, the blessing of Abraham might come also to the Gentiles through Yahawashai Hamashiach, that they might receive the promise of faith. So this is where they try to jump into there, you know, but they're not. But then once again, once you go back and find out how the Israelites became Gentiles, it's talking about the scattered ones. The ones that became Grecians, like in Acts uh, six and one, it didn't. It, you know, uh, they referred to it said there was a murmuring between the Hebrews and the Grecians. Well, why? When it was considering Hebrew things, because the Grecians were also Israelites. So when you look that word up, it says Hellenist, and a Hellenist was a Greek-speaking Jew. All right. So when you go up to twenty-nine, it it it, it makes it breaks down. What what is talking about? All right. And they try to make this 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 universalism. The Bible just said the the scholars just pointed out and the definition and the meaning of words and the scriptures makes it makes it clear that what they the, they said is an erroneous interpretation that Christianity teaches. And we're reading it. All right. Because they get they twist these two scriptures that are the one I just read and the one I'm about to read uh, uh, Galatians three and twenty nine. And if you be. Hamashiach, then ye are Abraham's seed and the heirs according to the promise. The heirs according to the promise. But right, let me read the one before that. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Hamashiach. He, so in context, he was talking to the Israelites and the Hellenist Israelites who will become Gentiles. Point blank, period. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wakakwadash, Wa'ababa, Kwam Yasharala.